Today's session is all about the millennials, and we are so excited to provide a forum for the voices of these young people to be heard. Because there's no sense for us to say that we are the great National Congress um, Trade Union of the Bahamas, we are the official voice of labor, and then the ones that are coming on who will one day be called Madam President, ladies, will have to take my position. But they can't take that position unless we train them, unless we sow into them. And so that's what we're doing this morning. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes. Yesterday, we had a little touch of the millennial man, and they blew us away. Didn't they? Show a clap. Did they? Yes. Awesome, awesome stuff. So this morning, we're doing the millennial women, and then we're going to do some kung salad, mix it up, and then do both in broad stars. And so, Sister Sherry Benjamin, our third vice president, second, third, am I correct, third? Third vice, second, your third, third vice president, and the woman on the presidential team who keeps the boys club grounded, I must say that, kudos to her. Um, she will join that group in Cross Star. So we will get a little bit of Kung salad going on in there. So without further ado, let me turn this stage over to Miss Anastasia Palacios Eiler. Y'all know her, Star. that we've brought our young men with us. And even though it's a celebration of International Women's Day, I began by talking to you about the fact that change comes when we stand together, right? And we look at um, the civil rights movement in the United States, and we recognize that as Dr. Martin Luther King marched, there were hundreds of white people that stood with them, right? We look at our own civil rights movement, and we look at the photos of our suffrage movement here, and we recognize that it was black men and black women and white women and white men that stood with us on those divides to make the final push for what we now get to enjoy. So it was important that we have men involved in this conversation today because we need them as partners on the front line of equality. So let's give our men a round of applause in celebration of who they will become on this journey to equality for women. So I want to invite up Mr. Basil Carter now. Basil is 16. He is the head boy at the New Providence Classical School. And Basil hopes to have a career as an aviation manager and a politician. So he definitely will be the one to change them laws for me. Let's give Basil a round of applause. Basil, you can come right here. You can sit right there. And then I'm going to have the other gentleman come and sit next to me. And in addition to Basil, we've got 
um, some other outstanding gentlemen with us today. I've got Mr. Javar Bullard. He's 17 years old, and he goes to Anatol Rogers Senior High School. Very excited to meet Mr. Bullard because Mr. Bullard hopes to be an engineer. And uh, that is something that we desperately, desperately, desperately need uh, in our country. So excited to have him with us today. And in addition to that, we're going to have Mr. Liam Miller. And Liam is 17 years old. He goes to Anatol Rogers Senior High. Liam, come on and sit on this side for me, please. Thank you, Liam. And we've got Mr. Duran Thompson. Duran is 17 years old, and he goes to CB Bethel High School. Let's give Duran a round of applause as he comes. Um, Duran is a man looking for the money, y'all. Duran says he's getting into finance and commerce, um, and he wants to have his own insurance company. Duran, when I come for my claim, just pay me. Y'all give Duran a round of applause, please. All right, and so we're so excited to have you guys join the conversation. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, y'all let that brace? I would have to get one more time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You all that? I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to get started um, with your thoughts on this. This is obviously about gender equality. This is about making sure that, you know, women's voices are heard. But I don't believe that you can have one without the other. I truly believe that the best of humanity comes when we have partnership between men and women. As young men, and I'm going to get started with you first, just because you have the mic right there, um, just let me know, what are your thoughts? Is there a need for this conversation about gender equality? Do you believe that women and men can work together to make this happen? What's your kind of thought process about this whole idea of an international women's day? Talk to me about that. Well, in my opinion, I believe in gender diversity. Mm -hmm. I believe that we should start seeing women in more fields such as engineering or even construction. Mm -hmm. And now you start to see women entering politics. You know, you now have a uh, female in cabinet and now female members of parliament. So mm -hmm. having a gender diverse economy and also a gender diverse work field would be better for the bombers. All right, thank you so much, sir. This is a brilliant young man. I just want you to pass that mic on down for me, please. Thank you so much. And let's put that right there with you. And if you could let me know, what are your thoughts on this whole idea of, of women and men and working together and this idea of gender equality? Is it still relevant? In regards to International Women's Day, I believe it's well-deserved. Um, women has came a long way from where they used to be fighting for their right to vote to now having the first ever female leader of a political party, mm -hmm. the first ever female leader of the official opposition, mm -hmm. the first ever female acting prime minister. Mm -hmm. That deserves a round of applause. Mm -hmm. In regards to the collaborative efforts, for any team to be successful, you need everyone to be on board. No matter if you disagree with each other, if you have different views from each other, you can never accomplish any goal without an entire team effort. So this is the first step to that effort. Okay, well, thank you so much, sir. And I want you to just pass that mic on right along for me, Javar. And Liam, let me know your thoughts on this idea of International Women's Day. Is this something that you believe in? Is it something that you see as a way for the future for young men like yourself? Uh, good morning. Um, to be honest, the idea of International Women's Day to me is really beautiful and it's amazing because for me itself, it symbolizes the culmination of the struggle that our female counterparts have taken over the past few centuries and decades, the struggles that they've taken to reach the pinnacle of power. Mm -hmm. So it really stands out to me, even though I am a male, and I am really glad to be here taking part in the celebration especially considering the fact that I myself have a mother and I have a sister mm -hmm. and they're females, so that's what I truly do feel. Okay. And I do also feel that a collaborative approach will be possible. And even though we females, the International Women's Day does symbolize how far females have become, I do feel that by us being here, it symbolizes a collaborative effort. All right. Thank you, sir. Collaboration is what the key is all about. And let us know your thoughts then on International Women's Day. Um, good morning, everyone, again. I feel like it's so important to be uplift, uplifting women at this seminar. So I'm just happy to be here. And I think women has made an essential part in our journey. Um, they just recently last year in Saudi Arabia, they just allowed women to start driving wow. in May of 2018. So the fight is never really over yeah. to 
have equal rights for women, but as today, we should really continue in this movement. I hope that all women in the Bahamas specifically, that we embody that movement, have that flame to continue to fight for equal rights because it's so deserved. I came from a single home, well, single mom home, just like Sky did, mm -hmm. and I'm glad to have a mother like that I did to raise me in a society as a male, especially. So I'm just really happy that there is International Women's Day. All right, thank you so much. Let's give our men a round of applause. Um, Bringing out the word collaboration, which I loved, honoring the women that have come before us, and certainly some distinguished men. I want to switch things up just a bit, because I want us to look like we, we on an equal footing and a playing field, right? So I want you all to stand up for me. I want all the y'all to stand up, stand up too. And I am going to ask that Liam, I want you to switch places with Sky for me, please. And actually switch places with Kianti. Kianti, just go over one. Bang, now you got, there you go. Okay, y'all can sit down now. I like how that looks. See y'all, see it? Equality in imagery and all. We, I think we have a question at the back of the room. All right, I'm going to give you one second to get that question to Sean, and then I'll come back to you. I just want them to answer one more thing for me before we get into that. Gentlemen, one of the major issues that we have coming out in the United Nations as we have this conversation about you know, equality and, and gender equality is that as we've put gender roles on women, as we've said to women, you can't be a leader, I'm going to pay you less, we've also said to men, you can't be weak, you can't cry. Um, and we find that a lot of men are very angry, right? And so some of the reasons that we see our men acting out in violent ways, the reasons that we see them getting into trouble, is because they don't have a positive outlet. Whereas a girl can cry because her feelings are hurt, or a girl can say, you've made me sad and you've hurt me, our men are not allowed to have that type of dialogue. Do you find that in your classrooms now, in high school now, men are able to express their emotions, or are they still being told to be very strong and to not show that they are upset? Um, personally, from my school, men are still being trained to be tough. You have to be the figure that really, you know, like upholds the figure of, of masculinity in society. Okay. So it's still happening today. But I, I believe that it's okay to cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's okay. It's, it's really it's okay to show emotions. I mean, these are all human actions. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be distinguished by what gender should be able to do what. Right. what. Okay. So I really think that's a major part that we must be able to fix in society. I think it all starts in the home as well. All right. Thank you so much. I want you to pass this mic to him. What about you? Um, can men express themselves or is it still very much, if you make me mad, I just can knock you out? How, how does that work? Well, <laughs> at my school, it's somewhat the same. Men are still judged based on their level of masculinity or if they show a bit of feminine, quote unquote, femininism. Uh -huh if they don't hold that standard of deep voice, um, all bulky, <laughs> if you're skinny, you have to have an image, a, it's like a stereotype uh -huh. that's still inside some schools, and I believe we're going to have to do a lot of work to change that. Okay, okay, all right. So we got some questions coming up from the audience in just a second. As soon as these men have answered this, we'll get into more of a, a dialogue between all of you. But let me know, Liam. I'm, have you been able to find that men are now able to express themselves more? Or is it still very much you cannot show emotion in school? Um, to be honest, I believe to an extent uh -huh. that men have been able to express their emotions. And I say that because, like Gavar said, in our school, there are stereotypes that we have to fill, mm -hmm. that males have to fill, the top guy image, the, the lady stealer image, <laughs> the lady stealer image. But at the same time, I did some research uh -huh. and and the University of British Columbia revealed that a value that males take up the most nowadays is selflessness. Okay. And that's in heavy contrast to the bad the top guy, bad boy image. Mm -hmm. So I think there's still a struggle, but I think the real question is, how do we as males balance all of this out? How okay. do we balance our sensitivity with our toughness? Okay. All right. That's, that's a good question. I hope one of y'all can answer later on. I've got to let you pass that mic on down to him. What, what are you seeing in terms of men being able to express their feelings and emotions? In my opinion, I believe we have a stigma attached as males. Mm -hmm. It also comes down to social development because I believe we have, as males, we have less outlets to go to, to speak mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, so as a male, I believe that we should have more of these outlets so that I could express myself. I could have someone to speak to. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, some good conversations here with our young men, and, and now we want to open up the floor to some conversations that I know you all wanted to have with them. There was a question from the audience, and Sean, let me know if you need a mic for that question to be asked. Okay, you coming? All right. Good 
Good morning, everyone. Okay, my question is, uh, we have already had an integration of females in the workplace, correct? We, we've seen females working in NIB, we've had female senators, female MPs, and as a matter of fact, the U.S. just completed a study where the Bahamas was actually on the list with the most forward-thinking countries with the most females in upper-level management positions. So for us, the conversation kind of, it's kind of switched in the sense, okay, females now have these positions, um, but what do we do about the sexual harassment aspect of it? Females are now being allowed into this boys club and we have the jobs but just like u.s senator mcsally would have said this morning on cbs news for 26 years she was in the u.s air force and she just admitted because she's now a part of the me too movement to being raped harassed in the air force and she said after 18 years she just couldn't take it anymore and she was actually to the point where she wanted to quit so my question is what do you feel as if males can do to make the work environment better for females because now females have inclusion but how do we work on the the safety the acceptance and the sexual harassment because there are so many females that are now coming out me too you see bill cosme just went to jail and there's always this, there's now so many other persons harvey weinstein r kelly yeah just to mention a few but what do we do to combat now because we have the jobs we're getting the jobs we're being empowered so what do we do to counteract these concerns that are happening because now the females are here? So what do we do now to ensure that, you know, we're not seeing harassment anymore in the workplace? So, our young people are not yet in the workplace, but I think one of the questions that they, that they might be able to phrase this as, and, and you can flip it on, is how are you beginning to educate yourselves now in school so that as women, one, you were confident enough to, to stand up against it, and then as men, too, you are honoring the females that are in classrooms with you, right? I know very early on in high school, and even from primary school, um, there was this thing called palming, and guys were so excited to, like, touch a girl's bottom or to touch a girl's um, chest, and they would do it in passing as if it was a game. But in reality, that type of behavior is what leads to sexual harassment in the workplace, right? If a girl is walking down a corridor and everybody's stopping to look at her backside, that's the type of the same men going to, when you walk on a job, the same men looking at your backside when you walk past. Um, if you are a prefect or a head boy and a girl is doing something and she doesn't want to get in trouble and you say, well, if you kiss me or if you do this, you don't have to get in trouble, that's the same sort of mentality that leads to sexual harassment in the workplace. So let's take that question and flip it more um, from your perspective in high schools as to what are the steps we can be taking now to ensure that when you get to that level, you are uh, protecting women and preventing things like sexual harassment at your level. Um, I don't know how much words this is. I wanted to say this amount of words, but anyway. Love thy neighbor as they love thyself, loves thyself. That means being respectful towards others. That means respecting other person's personal space. That means respecting the beliefs of others also. I mean, sexual harassment is relevant. The, re, the Me Too movement is something that's prominent. And I feel there needs to be respect on both parts, from the male and the female. And I think once you got that respect and you realize that, you know, you need to respect others, then it would be resolved. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, I'm not going to encourage um, excuses, but it all starts at home. Growing up, females as well as males, we are raised differently. Girls are raised to respect themselves, act a specific way, not make noise, be poised, and stuff like that. While men were ignored in that regard, we're encouraged to act a specific way because we're boys. We're encouraged to act like dogs because we're boys. So it goes back to how you were raised. If for equality, we have to be raised the same way so we both can understand the issues both our genders are facing. And if we're not being brought up in that way, this will continue to happen at the workplace and school. Take the final word on this, Leo. 
Um, I agree with both Kiande and Gavar. Mm -hmm. um, I think in order to eliminate sexual harassment in the workplace, first, there must be a change of thinking, and there must be a first a line of respect established. But like Duran said earlier, um, the first community you come from is the household. So I think it will really and truthfully, if you want to eliminate sexual harassment, it has to start from the household. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's give them a round of applause for that question. It's led me to two more questions, but before I get to those, I want to bring up Ms. Sherry Benjamin. She's the third vice president of the National Congress. Ms. Benjamin, if you would be so kind as to join us, and y'all give her a round of applause for when she does make her way up here to us. I'm grateful that she'll be joining this discussion. Uh, two of the things that came out of the conversations that they said based on that amazing question that you asked about sexual harassment. Uh, one was this idea, and we found it online, happening early this year when our young men went back to school. And so many women were excited about seeing these handsome young men in their school clothes. And you may not have been aware of it, but there was a, a really big conversation online about women as predators, right? And few people have talked about that. But I remember being in high school and a young man in the 12th grade with me was dating somebody at a commercial bank who was taking care of him, right, financially. So he was taking care of her needs and she was taking care of his and quite frankly would be against the law, right? Um, and so... I think that that's one conversation that we need to kind of get into because we often talk about young girls and all the men. See the boys laughing because the boys know. They know that these women are chased after them, right? Um, what has been your experience like with that? Do you, you, have you all heard, are those types of stories relevant to you? Um, is that a conversation that we need to have about women who, you know, open up our men to sexuality very early on? Is, are there any concerns from your generation about that? Or is it still accepted? Oh, it's a woman, so it's fine. Let us know. In my opinion, I believe that this is a problem. This is a very prevalent problem in Bahamas, and it often goes unnoticed. Mm -hmm. um, as young persons, it shouldn't be males just be noticed as the predator. Mm -hmm. It's also the females. Mm -hmm. And now you find... <laughs> <laughs> and now you find that certain males my age, or even older than me, or even younger than me, are uh, being... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Being molested. Molested by these women. Mm -hmm. so that's what it is, y'all. That is the legal terminology. I'm going to just interject right here because we, we, and you even, as we talk about this, there's not a level of seriousness as there would be if we were talking about a 40-year-old man and a 14-year-old girl, right? Because we've been conditioned to believe that, you know, that's wrong when it happens between a male and a female, but that it's not wrong if it happens between a woman and a man. But a lot of the issues that we see coming with, out with our young men much later on is a result of them having been exposed to sex by older women too early on and therefore leading to other issues in their lives later as it relates to relationships and women. So let's listen to the young man and, and, and let him continue because this is, this is a serious thing. Also, it's a learning process. So we must teach the heads or whoever is in charge of, let's say, social services that these are things you must look out for because it may become a problem. It may happen to me, mm -hmm. Liam, Kaval, or Duran. Mm -hmm. It's a serious problem. It's a serious problem. All right, thank you. Any other commentary on that? Okay. So I want, again, with the situation that you were saying just now, um, it'll be deemed okay if a 15-year-old boy is seeing like a 27-year-old woman or it'll be like horrible for a 15-year-old girl to be seeing a 40-year-old man. The warped mindset is really, is really crazy because the girl will be slut shamed. She'll be, be called names because of that. She'll be called all type of derogatory terms. Meanwhile, the boy will be called a player and cool and it'll be like awesome. So that's, what the, that's the mindset that people are having today and still happening today. But I really think it should change because... That's molestation, and you're being exposed to so much different things from a young age, not knowing the types of, types of like, diseases that can spread, the possible pregnancies that could occur. And since you're doing this from a young age, you're going to teach your children to do the same thing because you're going to deem it as okay. So it really is a topic that needs to be addressed, especially in the school system, so that it really can touch the hearts of many young men. Um, and it just goes to women knowing their worth. And in my school, I've noticed that how I'm a grade 10 and I'm 15, there's a girl in my grade and she's liking a boy that's out of school. And she says she doesn't want a boy in school because they're too playful or immature. And that's only because they don't drive a car. 
Well, <laughs> personally, I don't feel like you should put yourself down because of material things. Something as small as a car, you're going to ruin your future because of a car. I mean, you have to think about the bigger picture. It goes about self-worth and maturity, being mature. You have to be the bigger person to say, this needs to stop because it's not okay. I'm not going to ruin my future and be blackmailed because it's, it's happening. There are people that abuse young girls and say, well, if you tell, I'm going to kill you. And girls aren't thinking about that because they only see the small picture. Well, he could drop me to the movies, but old back is right across the street. Come on, we can't lose our future for gallery of cinemas. We must be bigger people. <laughs> Thank you. All right, any more thoughts on that? Um, Go ahead for me, Sky. I, I believe mean, Ke that Keontae. neither mm -hmm. of those situations are okay. And once again, it dates back to respect. You must respect yourself enough to know that you are a grown woman. You should not be preying on a little child, a little boy. Leave that boy alone. Likewise with a man, leave that young girl alone. Because, I mean, you wouldn't want it to happen to your daughter. But then a question comes to me. What happens to the persons who are living in homes where their parents are sexually molesting them? Right. So right. I wanted to know. Well, I wanted to ask that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like I said, it comes with respect. And I think morals mm -hmm. need to be taken into account mm -hmm. to aid that problem. But I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, it's not okay. It's relevant, but it's not okay. So I, I, I'm so glad you brought up the fact that, and this is a conversation that I think we miss having a lot, right? That we often look at women and at men who behave in a certain manner and determine and judge them and say that this is wrong without fully understanding the background from which they come recognizing that so many of our people are abused, right? Like one in every three people have had a sexual experience that they did not want to have. So whether that's a boy or a girl, somebody has forced them to do something sexually that they didn't want to do. And obviously it impacts the psyche and we're learning more about that as, as, as you know, the technology age opens up and we can do more research. Um, but a lot of people are dealing with those issues. And so I think one of the calls that I would want to leave to you all as you continue to fight for gender equality in your schools, as you continue to become people of excellence, is to acknowledge that to work with organizations like um, the National Congress to talk about how we can have programming for people who are victims of sexual violence. Because a lot of the challenges that we see are related to that. And as it comes back to gender equality, and as you mentioned, Keante, if we respected each other, and if we respected ourselves to not inflict trauma exposed to us to other people, then we wouldn't have those challenges uh, that we're seeing. So those are some major issues that are happening. We're going to have to wrap up soon. And, and I saw Ms. Benjamin join us just briefly, and I'm sure she'll be back in a moment. But as we kind of end this conversation around, um, you know, this idea of equality, of balance, for, and when we say the word balance, obviously a balance is two sides, so that's both men and women's. Balance for better being the theme this year. What are some of the final words that you want to leave with us as young men and as young women? What are some of those final thoughts that you really want to get across to those who are here right now and those who are going to be watching on TV as it relates to that? And of course, if there are any final questions, if you could just wave your hand for me so that we can know that, they, that we do have more questions in the audience, we will get to those as well. Um, but I'm going to start with that, and then Ms. Benjamin, I guess you will say a few words for us. Hi, I, I, I'm so proud today um, to have you guys here with us celebrating our International Women's Day. Um, and you guys are doing such an awesome, awesome job. I am so proud. Give them a round of applause. You give me yeah. hope for our future. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Ms. Benjamin. All right. So final thoughts, you all. And if there's something that somebody said that you kind of wanted to acknowledge or say, oh, we have a question. We have a question. The Ministry of Education is in the process of working its curriculum. Are you comfortable, students, with the curriculum in the schools with regards to the issues of incest, violence, um, rights for women, diversity. I was so proud to hear the young man talk about diversity. Um, equity. What is equity for gender, for women and men, for boys and girls? What about STEM? I heard several engineers, and I heard someone wanting to be an accountant and an engineer. Are you sufficiently trained in the areas you think in the areas that affect you most. How can the curriculum be adjusted to satisfy your needs? Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Higgs. Let's give her a round of applause. And 
you I guys are you. you guys are so so smart. <laughs> I mean, you all have me just I'm just sitting here captivated. <laughs> but and and, and um, I guess you can kind of answer it and tie it into um, this question that I'm going to ask you. I want to know the, from a union standpoint, how much do you know about the unions? Mm -hmm. Because this is a conference that is put on by the National Congress of Trade Unions Women's Branch. Mm -hmm. So I want to know how much do you know about unions and what do you think that, what do you think that, or what do you expect from union leaders? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are you getting your expectation? And if not, what do you feel that we as union leaders can do, do to um, change your outlook on us yeah. as leaders, union leaders? Excellent, excellent question. Ms. Belinda Wilson, because <laughs> when, Oftentimes, we as children are looked down on, and because the adults don't have an open mind, and some, I appreciate teachers who actually listen to us and go to her because she fights for us. So I appreciate her so much because she gets, she gets the job done. And um, I have family members who are in the union. My aunt is here now, and unions are a vital part in the Bahamas without the union leader <laughs> without the union leaders or <laughs> without the union um, the problems that are relevant they won't be heard so the unions play a very important role in almost everything because even the women's congress that's going on now I appreciate it because it makes me as a young lady want to go and do this makes me want to fight because if you are doing it I want to do it also because other students or other persons may not have this opportunity. So I like forums like this, which give us the opportunity to talk and to speak one-on-one -on -one with union leaders. So unions are very important. Um, like Keontae was saying, unions are like very important. I also like to shout out Ms. Melinda Wilson. As she, she started off CV Battle when CV Battle first was created. So being from CV Bethel, I'm very happy with the actions that she's been taking for schools in, sp in particular to really fight for the rights of teachers and students as well. So I say thank you for that. And regarding other unions as well, unions basically just help all of, like, people of a workforce come together and like, really bring a connection and try address different issues that are needed to address. So without them, I think in the Bahamas, the unions are really good. I think they're really needed and really going the right direction that we want society to be in 20 years. So I feel like it's really good. And learning about unions in commerce, since I'm a business student, it really taught me a lot about the different unions in the Bahamas. And I think it was just needed. Thank you. Um, as all of us are students, we learn about the unions in school and also we see it on the news every night, you know, unions fighting for certain rights for workers and it's great and we as students thank you for it, but because we will, end, we will soon enter the workforce and unions are needed. And so we have rights and when we work we will have rights. So it all plays in part with each other and we must focus more on Let's say not division in the union, but more a unionized union. <laughs> okay, y'all had that? Yeah, y'all gone quiet on that one. He said he don't want no focusing on the division of the union. He wants a more unified union. So let me get an amen. Thank you. Y'all, I don't want less applause. All right, Ms. I know, I know we are quickly running out of time, but uh, my final, final question to you guys would be in two parts. Um, I want to know if you guys are happy with the direction the country is going right now, with all the social ills that we're experiencing, if you are happy with it. And the last question, and I really would like to hear the guys, the gentlemen, your input on this. Do you ever believe, or do you see in the future us having a female prime minister? Okay, thank you. So I'll let each of you answer that question if you would like. If not, you can pass the mic on. 
And yes, I do believe eventually we will see a female Prime Minister of the Bahamas, as you know, Arantia Kamalafe. She was the first leader of the first female leader of a major political party in the Bahamas, and that is something that is changing, and we will see it soon. Thank you. All right, over here on the side. Yes, I know. I believe the country is moving in the right direction, and in some regards, it's not. Socially, socially, we have some setbacks in regards to women's rights, workers' rights, and we're still we're like we're in the infancy stage. We're still fighting to become a proper child or a teen. We haven't even reached adulthood yet. Um, but in regards to some sectors of education, students be able to go off to college and receive a tertiary education, we're moving in the right direction for that. So all of the trailblazers, the leaders, they deserve a round of applause in that regard. Um. I do feel like we are moving in the right direction. And, I, and as someone who does observe the politics of my day and has aspirations to go into politics myself, I do think that we are moving in the right direction. But at the same time, we still have our up and downs. Um, there are still some social ills prevalent in our society. And one thing that alarms me is the murder rate, especially around young males of our generation, like it's insane and it's crazy. And I think we're gradually moving, but it will take time. And the second question, I do feel that we will inevitably have a female prime minister. However, I feel like I will totally support that, but at the same time, I feel like when we go out and vote, it shouldn't just be solely based on a gender. I think we should look beyond the gender of the candidate and we should look towards our ideas, even though our gender was separated from the other candidates. But that's how I feel. Um, I do think the country is going in the right direction. I do believe there are a lot of ills there still with women rights and racism, believe it or not, because if I saw a statistic recently saying that black women in particular are one of the most underrated females in the world. So in a society like that, I think it's going in the right direction that we want to see it, but we have to still keep that flame and passion to continue this movement. And regarding a female prime minister, I do believe that it's gonna happen in the future. I would like to, <laughs> I would like to shout out Waynesha Saunders. Waynesha Saunders is in Liberty University right now and she's one of my very dear friends. She's studying law, and she's, when she comes back, her passion is to become the next Prime Minister of the Bahamas. And that was her dream since from junior school. And I, know, and I have no doubt whether she will be in the running for it. So I will see it in the future. Just a matter of time. Uh, I believe that we are in a stagnant position as a country, but there is room for improvement. There is room for us to evolve with STEM, with how we judge one another, with how we work as a country, because we are one Bahamalan, and our national anthem says, lift up your head to the rising sun. When I think of that, I think of lifting up our heads to new direction. I think of lifting up our heads to new innovation. I think of us moving forward, upward, onward together, because the youth is the future, and we are going to make it. Mm -hmm. And in regards to there being a female prime minister, once again, I said earlier, woman can do anything a man can do. Once we solve the problem with woman equality, we, sh <laughs> we should think about what the person is going to do, how they are going to contribute to the Bahamas. If that person has the best interest in heart, male or female, give them the position. Okay, in regards to the Bahamas moving forward, I feel like, yes, we do have our problems. We have value-added tax going up constantly. <laughs> and I realized, and as soon as the Bahamas realize that we are the Bahamas and not the United States of the Bahamas, this will be a better country when we start taking advantage of our own things. Because, you know, there was a tourist that came here, and we were walking on the beach, and the son in Harbor Island, and he said, you all know how much money you all standing on? So when we really like take advantage of our resources, we will be better people. But the country is moving forward because we are here. Mm -hmm. 
And also with the Prime Minister, I totally agree that there will be a female Prime Minister of the Bahamas as long as she has the right mindset and she brings God along with her. Nothing is impossible because impossible says that I'm possible. All right, my challenge to the union, and I know I have to leave it while I have it, we will always talk about all the capacity that we have. And we look at all these women in this room, and as my friend from the back shouted, there's so many things that we've not only done just as well, but even better. And yet there's still something that is stagnating us and stopping us from achieving the, the upper echelons, right? And so I really want to leave it out there to you to begin to think about not just saying it, but the systems that it requires. And we know that in other nations, they have written into their laws where a certain amount of people have to be women in parliament, a certain amount of um, um, political parties have to offer women candidates, and it's something that we shy away from, but it's, it, it needs to be a mechanism, a strategy, not just a talk about how we get from where we are to where we want to be. And so I just want to leave that with the union as you continue to advance your own causes, even within your own organizations, looking at the structures that we set up so that women are represented, because it can't just be talk, there has to be action. As far as the union is concerned, when I joined the workforce in 1986, I joined BTC in 1986, I was introduced right away to the trade union movement. So I, I, I'm really, 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 really glad that we had this session today. And I'm so, so very proud of these young people because by God, these are some bright minds. We have here sitting before us and I, I really do see future prime ministers future members of parliament, future um, leaders of this country sitting right here among us. And I'm sure like, last year we had Sky, and she did an awesome job last year and she's back again this year. And I hope that maybe next year for our, our third session, we, we have some of you guys again. You'll be a year older and a year wiser mm -hmm. and you'll be able to bring some more light into some of the younger people. So really, I'm very, very grateful and thankful that you guys are here with us today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, applaud Ms. Benjamin, and let's also applaud our panelists. I want to give you their names one more time so that you are familiar with them. Basil Carter. Uh, Basil, if you could just wave for everyone so that they know who you are. Thank you, Basil, so much for joining us today. Um, of course, we've got sitting next to him, Keante Stewart. Keante, let's give um, everyone a wave so they know you. We've got Liam Miller as well with us today. Liam, thank you so much for being here. Um, Jabbar Bullard, thank you so much for being here. Um, Ms. Skye, thank you so much for coming and, and, and teaching us more about everything that's happening in your world. And of course, Duran Thompson, thank you so much for being here as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, an exceptional, exceptional group of young people. It would be remiss of me to not thank um, Sharon Martin, who organized all of this and put this together. Thank you so much, Ms. Martin, for having us and for giving us the opportunity to, to be here with you. Thanks to all of you for listening, for the engaging questions you ask, certainly be being, being very prepared, having researched, um, and really coming with some important questions for our young people to answer for us. I, I, I think it's my social responsibility always to not just end the conversation leaving it stagnant, but to talk about the takeaways. And I certainly believe that one takeaway that we got from these young people today was how excited they were to have this conversation with you. And so our young people want to talk to you. They want to engage you. They want to let you know how they're feeling. So I just want to encourage you to continue to open spaces for dialogue like this to happen. I want to encourage you to just take what they've said. And, and you heard them talk about the social programming and all the things that they see. The only way we can change that is by giving them alternatives and options. So I want to again applaud you all for the opportunity to record this session so that we can share it, right? So now there's an option. They don't have to watch some negative cartoon. They can watch this. But until we give them options, they're only going to go with what they already have. So let's again create those spaces for not just dialogue, but for options and opportunity to create the programming that we want our young people to be engaged in. And finally, let's not forget those young people that were not here today, that we still need to guard and reach. And so as a union, as you continue to progress and fight forward and look for your own legacy and how you will continue to grow the unions in years to come, let's not forget our young people in schools who need us as well. So thanks again for having me. It's been a pleasure um, to have this conversation with you as we celebrate another International Women's Day with Balance for Better. Certainly a wonderfully balanced panel today. We wish you every success and we hope that we will be back here next year with even more brilliant young people to talk, you, talk to you. I'm Anastasia Palacios and it has been a joy. Thank you so much.